Canon's G7X Mark II is the content creator's compact camera. Whether you're into shooting videos or stills, this camera is packed full of features to help your content stand out. In this video, I'm gonna take a look at some of the features of this camera to really help you get the most out of it. So, let's get started. You'll notice on the top of the camera, we have the main mode control dial. Here, you can change between shooting in the full automatic mode, which is a really good place to start if you're not too sure about what adjustments you should be making to your camera. The next one up is the Creative Auto, which is actually really intelligent. The camera will automatically change the scene mode depending on what you point your camera to. For example, if you point it towards a person, it will automatically detect that face and change it into portrait mode. The same with a variety of different preset automatic shooting modes. When we move the camera up, we have P, which is for program mode, uses the camera's built-in light meter to automatically adjust the shutter speed and the aperture. This is a really great mode to start on. If you're just starting out with this camera, um, shooting on P, you really can't go wrong. If you wanna get a little bit more out of your camera and control some of those semi-manual modes, TV and AV could be a good option for you. TV controls our shutter speed, which in turn controls how much motion we capture in that shot. AV controls the aperture, which controls the depth of field. So whether we have a shallow depth of field and a blurry background, or perhaps a great depth of field, which would be suitable for landscapes, for example. And then when you've got a good control over both of those settings, you can shoot in manual. Manual allows you to have full control over the camera. Here we set the shutter speed, the aperture and the ISO ourselves. Coming down from some of the EOS models, you might notice this addition into this camera is C mode, which is for custom settings. Now, if you like to take photos of waterfalls, for example, you might know that you need a specific shutter speed, aperture and ISO to get the best results. Rather than setting your camera every time you go to take a photo, you can program those settings into the C mode. So it's really quick and easy for you to get to your favorite settings. If we move the mode dial down below auto, you'll come to SCN. SCN is for scene and the camera has a lot of automatic preset settings that are built into the camera. For example, you can see on the back of the camera here, I'm in scene now, and I have a mode for fireworks, underwater, miniature effects, background defocus, panning, and even a star mode. So if you're really not too sure about what your shutter speed or your ISO might need to be for a night mode, why don't you try putting the camera around into scene and selecting the preset star mode. Lastly, on this mode dial, we have the video mode. When we turn this dial around to video, we then have full access of all of the features that the camera has in video mode. Let me show you some more. I simply press this little video camera icon on the screen and you can see here, these are the different options that I have within the movie mode. Short clip is a really great way of taking little snippets of movie and putting them together to create one edited movie. We have manual control, which allows us to have full control over your shutter speed and aperture when in movie mode. Then we have time-lapse movie mode, which is really neat feature that the camera will automatically make its own time-lapse movie, where you get to control the intervals and the number of shots taken. And then you have iframe movie for editing on iframe compatible devices. One of the features that I love out of Canon's G series cameras is this exposure compensation dial that's really quick and easy to access on the top of the camera. Regardless of what shooting mode you're in, if you just need to make the shot a little bit brighter or a little bit darker, it's really simple to do. All you need to do is move this dial here to the plus side to make it brighter and down to the negative side to make it a little bit darker. A really great way to start having a bit more control over your images. Next to that dial, you have the zoom control. So this little toggle here will control the camera's built-in zoom. And on top of that, you have the shutter button. We need to half press it to focus, fully press it down to take the photo. On the front of the G7X Mark II, you do have this extra ring here that we can control and program to be a variety of different features. On the front of the camera, you'll notice a little switch here, which will change whether that ring has a smooth progression or whether it has a stepping and a clicking sound. You can adjust that to your own preference. On the back of the camera here, we can press the ring function set to change 
what we want that front ring to be in control of. Some of the options you can see there, ISO, white balance, zoom, you can really customize it to your liking. Next to the ring function set button, we have the movie record. With this little red button here, you can press it once to start the movie recording and press it again to stop. This back control wheel, not only will it help you to scroll through some of your camera settings, at the moment we're in TV mode, so when I move my thumb dial here, it changes my shutter speed, but it also is a multi-control wheel. I can press up, down, left and right, and also have access to that Q button in the middle. Let me take you through some of those features now. When I press the up key, this changes my drive mode, so I can quickly change between a single shot or perhaps a high speed burst shot. This would be ideal if you had a fast moving subject. The camera continually takes photos while your finger is depressed on the shutter button. On the right hand side, we have the flash button. You need to make sure that your flash is popped up and to do so, you just press the little flash button on the side of the camera. Once it's popped up, you can then use this button here to control whether the flash is on or off. You can also manually close the flash to turn it off. The down button will control the amount of information that you can see on the screen. This is also a really great way to have the electronic level visible on your screen as well as the histogram. If it's too much information, it's a little overwhelming, you can keep pressing the info button to turn all the information off the screen. On the left hand side of this dial, you'll notice the macro and manual focus. So if I press this, I can toggle between macro, which is great for close-ups, manual focus or normal shooting mode. One of the quickest ways to navigate around the most commonly used settings is by pressing the Q button, which is located in the middle of this dial here. When I press the Q button, I can quickly change my autofocus point, my ISO, white balance. You can see here that all of the most popular settings to change are quickly accessible by pressing that Q button. Let me take you through a few of those now. When we change our autofocus point, we have two options here. The first one is for face tracking. This is ideal if you have a person in your shot and you need to make sure that their face remains in focus. The second one we have is single point with your autofocus. This would be great if you had a still life or something that's not moving and you needed to really make sure that focus point stays in the middle of the shot. When you are in this mode, why don't you utilize the touch screen? I can actually touch where I want the camera to focus simply by touching the back of the screen. Once you've selected your autofocus points, the next thing you need to do is decide whether your subject is moving or still. By changing the AF mode, you can really help your camera to focus on your subject much faster. The two options that this little camera has is one shot, which is perfect for stationary subjects, things that don't move. And the second one is servo. Servo is great for focusing on things that are moving. It helps your camera to continually track the moving subject to make sure that you get that focus much faster. Below that, we can shoot in RAW or JPEG. If you plan on editing your photos, I recommend shooting in RAW. If you just wanna take the photos straight out of the camera and be able to view them on a TV or share them with your friends, then perhaps JPEG is best. JPEG is also a really good way that you can utilize the built-in white balance and picture styles. So you can do some of that editing in camera, save you doing it on the computer later. As we move through this Q menu, we can change the different resolutions that are available to us. You'll notice this little camera here will allow you to shoot in full HD, 1920 by 1080, at a variety of different frame rates. This one has 50 frames per second, 25 frames per second, and you can also shoot down into VGA quality as well. Beneath that, we have the two second self timer, which is great if you wanna make sure that the camera is nice and steady. It also does have a 10 second self timer built into here as well. The G7X Mark II also comes with a built-in ND filter. This is a really neat little feature to have in a camera like this. If you're out taking photos at sunrise and sunset and you find that they're simply too bright, you just turn the ND filter on and it will allow you to extend the shutter speed out to get those really dreamy images. The G7X Mark II also has this really neat built-in LCD screen. 
It has a variety of different angles that we can flip the screen up depending where we're shooting from to really change your perspective. Also very handy for those that are into taking selfies, you can flip the screen up to see yourself. Otherwise, you can flip it right down if you wanted to shoot over crowds or perhaps shoot very, very low. It's very versatile. On the back of the camera, if you're wanting to review your images, quite simply press the playback button on the back of the camera. And from here, you can use your finger to scroll left and right to see the images. With the touch screen, you can also pinch zoom in to check the detail. And if it's not to your liking, simply press the trash can button, which in playback mode is also the ring function set. And here we can select or raise the image. You'll notice when you press the menu button, if we're in playback mode, the menu will give me another set of playback menu options. Here we can resize the image, we can crop, but we can also do in-camera raw processing. So if you've captured an image in raw that you needed it to be JPEG, you can quite simply do an in-camera raw processing on that image. When you're not in playback mode and you press the menu, you'll notice that you have three different pages of the menu available to you. The red is the shooting menu, which will take you through your different camera settings. The yellow is the setup menu, which is where you would locate things like the date and time, the language, and also reset the camera back to its factory settings. And the green menu is my menu. So it allows you to customize your menu with the items that you use more frequently. On the right hand side of the camera, you'll notice here we have the Wi-Fi button. This is a really quick and easy way for you to send images from your camera to your mobile device. Make sure you check out the video embedded in this link here so you can get a little bit more information on how to do that. Above the Wi-Fi button, we have two different plugs here. One is for USB and one is for the HDMI cable. On the bottom of the camera, you'll notice the NFC symbol. This is another means of a wireless connection. We have the tripod adapter where we can set this camera up on a little tripod. And we also have the memory card and the battery slot located here under this flap. To release the memory card, simply press it down, it's spring loaded. And with this little battery symbol here, you need to release it on the side. Although this is a really neat compact camera, could fit in your pocket, it does also offer some of the features from our SLR range, like shutter speed and aperture control. I'm gonna do a little experiment now to show you the difference between shooting in AV modes, shallow depth of field versus a really great depth of field. Let me show you that now. So what is AV mode? AV controls our aperture, which controls our depth of field. Now, as I select a low aperture number, for example, F 2.8 or F 4, I can have a very shallow depth of field, which means just my foreground is in focus and the background is nice and soft and blurry. I'm gonna do that now with these three little items. So the first thing I've set my camera into AV mode on the top dial here, and I'm going to select a very, very low aperture number. I can get down to 2.8 on this camera and I'm simply going to focus on the first item closest to the camera. When I take that image, the first item is nice and sharp and the background is soft and blurry. As I select a greater number, I'm going to extend the amount of focus I have throughout my scene. I've set the camera now to F11 and we'll take the same shot. As you can see there between those two images, at F11, I have all three in focus, right from the foreground through to the background. Whereas when I'm shooting at f2.8, only the foreground is nice and sharp. That would be ideal if you're taking photos of people or portraits. Now let's do a little experiment with our shutter speed. In TV mode, I can control how much motion I capture in that frame. I'm gonna do an experiment now with a fast shutter speed and I wanna freeze the action. And then I'm gonna select a very slow shutter speed so I can capture as much of that spinning motion as possible. So the first thing you need to do is to set your camera into TV mode and select a fast shutter speed. I'm going for one one thousandth of a second. Now, when I spin this spinner and I take a photo, I'm able to really freeze that fast moving subject. I want to do the same experiment now, but with a much slower shutter speed. So I'm going to select 1 30th of a second. 
and we'll take the same shot. And you can see that we have two very different results. A fast shutter speed is ideal for a fast moving subject. If you're photographing children, sports, even birds in flight, the fast shutter speed is ideal. The slow shutter speed would be perfect if you had the camera set up on a tripod and you wanted to take a photo of a waterfall, for example, where you can capture all of that lovely soft moving water. If you've gone and changed a whole bunch of settings and you're not really too sure what you've done, you can always reset the camera back to factory settings. It's quite simple to do and I'll show you how to do that now. First step is to press the menu button and navigate across to the yellow setup menu. You'll notice on page four at the very bottom, you have an option that says reset all. And when I reset that, it sets the camera back to the default factory settings. I hope this video has helped you get to know a little bit more about your new Canon G7X Mark II.